Hi, this is Winslow. This is Cramson. And if you like what we're doing, hit the like button. And if you want to hear more, subscribe. The Casebook of Sydney Chase, produced and edited by Crimson McKenzie, written and directed by Winslow Swan, and featuring Dave Arkhipov, Will Dorman, Ezra J.D. Emmons, Winslow Swan, and starring Crimson McKenzie as Sydney Chase. Tonight's episode, Accused. Ah, oh, please, c- come in. Yes, I am Alex McDougal, affectionately known as McGoogle to my friend Sydney Chase, although she knows how much it frustrates me. I understand that you are here to find out about the case of Gary Lyman, also known as the most wanted thief in the state. I remember it well. Uh, Sydney had been called by Lieutenant Anthony Ferraro earlier in the day, and she... Well, Tony, here I am, looking as wonderful as ever. It's not a date, is it? <laughs> no? Okay, your face says no, so what is so urgent that you could not tell me over the phone? Do you know Gary Lyman? No, but if you hum a few bars, I might be able to fake it. <laughs> Abbott and Costello, 1938. <laughs> Very funny. I'm being serious, Sydney. Do you remember Gary Lyman? D- uh, should I? Yes, you really should. He was your first major bust. You were still in uniform. Oh! Lyman Gary. Yes, I do remember. Bad luck on his part. Tell me the truth, Sydney. How did you catch the most wanted thief? He had just robbed his 27th store. I was patrolling that street, and he... <laughs> He cut a flat tire while trying to get away, bless him. And you, being the good officer that you were, decided to help. Well, of course. Until he pulled a gun on me. Which you promptly dropped, trying to get out of the car. It was still my collar, and don't you forget it. He's out. Who's out? Now, who do you think that we've been talking about? Ooh, wait. How, how did he get out? Paroled. Just the other day. Well, gee, I'm so glad that someone told me. I'm just finding out about it myself. You remember what he said to you? How could I forget? Um, Sydney, it's your move. What? Oh, right. Sydney! What is it? You just put your king in check. Oh, I guess Uh, I did. Your mind really isn't on the game. Would you like to tell me what's going on? I just got some rather distressing news today. Obviously, but... I have never known you to be upset over news. Alex, when I first started with the police department, I captured a thief. I was only on the force for three months, and to me, it was a pretty big deal. I'm still waiting for the distressing part. The man I captured, Gary Lyman, was just paroled. So why is that so distressing to you? Ten years he's been inside. For ten years, he's probably been thinking, and I'm sure planning something. And why should that be a concern for you? Because when the judge sentenced him, he swore that when he got out, he would find and kill me. Oh, I don't think that he would really do such a thing. You don't think so? I found this when I got back from meeting with Ferrari. It was slipped under my door. Hmm... Be seeing you very soon. Well, he didn't sign it. Oh, it was him. I talked to Miss Franklin next door. She told me for the past few days there's been a man on the sidewalk pacing back and forth in front of my window. No, I understand your apprehension now. Would you like me to answer the door? Alex, I am a professional detective. I always take proper precautions. Would you? (laughs) May I help you? Well, you're not Sidney Chase. No, I'm not. I'm Dr. Alexander McDougal. Now, how may I help you? Is Chase in? I'm afraid that she's not taking clients at the moment. Just give her a message for me. Uh, What is the message? Just tell her that Gary sends his best regards. And just who the hell are you? 
So you are home. Let's start with your name. Or would you rather tell it to the police first? I'm Harry. But then, aren't we all? I'm not laughing. Steinman. I work for an insurance company as a private detective. So how do you know Gary Lyman's? Don't you think that we could perhaps go inside and talk? Sydney? This is a 9mm Glock. I have no problem pulling the trigger if you don't explain that message that you gave Alex. Well, I got you to the door, didn't it? I'm not one to count to three. Uh, She barely makes it to one. Gary Lyman's stole over three million dollars, and it was never recovered. So what makes you think that I know where it's at? Oh, come on, Miss Chase. You arrested him on a fluke? No one really believes that. My trigger finger is starting to get itchy. Look, I thought that maybe, since you might be seeing him sooner than I can find him, we could pull our resources and go do this thing. Di- Goodbye, Mr. Steinway. Uh, Steinman. Mm. Well, that was rather interesting. In more ways than one. Alex, did, did he show you any identification? Oh, no, not that I remember. So how do we know that he is who he says he is? I don't think that he even mentioned the agency that he supposedly works for. He was right about one thing. Now what is that? Lyman's did make off with three million on one job. The money was never recovered. Oh, which means that there may be several interested parties in his movements. Hmm, and I am one of them. And to what do I owe the inconvenience of this visit? I need some info, Tony. Of course you do. I'm not the police. I'm the Information Bureau. Lyman's was paroled, so obviously you have an address on him. Sydney, I'm warning you. Don't go near Lyman's. Why, Tony, you really do care. I've got three teams watching him. To see if he goes for the money or me. Brilliant deduction, Miss Chase. Well... Has he tried to get the money? The only thing that Gary Lyman's has done so far is board my teams. He sits in his room watching game shows and ordering takeout. So what am I supposed to do? Sydney, if he shows up at your place, <laughs> call a cop. What? Ferraro actually told you that? Oh, Mr. Quickwit. So what are you planning? Well, I can go confront Gary now, or wait for him to come here. Either way, Lieutenant Ferraro is not going to be happy with you. Is he ever? Ah, Find anything interesting? Lyman's wasn't working alone on that job. Apparently he was the only one that was caught. What happened to the other man? No one knows. Uh, Sydney, what exactly was stolen? Diamonds, my dear Alex. Diamonds. Three million dollars worth. They hit a diamond exchange, and from what I remember, they knew exactly what to go after. At first, the police thought it was an inside job, but all of the employees were cleared. And now, somewhere out there is a collection of diamonds. I can see why the insurance company would want them back. I still would like to know who this Harry Steinman is. I called a lovely friend to check for me. He should be getting back to me later. Well, then I suggest you allow me to take you to dinner. (gasps) Why, Mr. McGoogle, are you asking me out on a date? Sydney, I'm old enough to be... to be... Well, I'm too old for you! (laughs) Oh, Alex, I'm only kidding. I would love to have dinner with you. Well, I hope that you enjoyed yourself. Oof. It was wonderful, Alex. Thank you so much. Uh, Sydney, I thought that you left the light on in the front room. So did I. Hang on. Let me turn it on. There, that's bit... What the... Sydney, what is... uh... Oh, well now. There is something that you don't see every day. Join the police force. Is he dead? Mm, With a hole in the back of his head that size, I would say yes. 
So now what? I do what Ferraro told me to do. Call the cops. Damn it, Sydney. I warned you to stay away from Lyman. Ferrari, I didn't go near him. Then please explain his presence on your living room floor. I didn't invite him over. I haven't the foggiest. Admit it, Sydney. He came here to confront you, and you shot him. You could get off with justifiable homicide. Take the garbage out your ears and listen. I did not kill him. Coroner says he was shot with a thirty-eight, perhaps. Yeah, and I have a nine mil. You could have another gun. Tony, Sidney was with me all night. We came in together and discovered the body. I'm assuming that it is Gary Lyman's. You assume correctly, Alex. So, Ferrari, you still think that I killed him? Sidney, I've asked you time and again not to call me that. Well, it beats Dr. McGoogle. The body was found in your home. Shot, and it wasn't armed. Are you positive? Maybe whoever killed him took his weapon as well. Sydney, I've been wanting to say this for a long time. You are under arrest. Now hold on, Ferrari. I have an alibi. Yes, you're a very close friend, Doctor McDougal. I'm sure he's willing to lie for you. I resent that. That is uncalled for. Perhaps the both of you were in on it. In on what? Come on, Sydney. Three million in diamonds, and he comes to see you first. Put your hands behind your back. Now, just wait a minute, Tony. You know that I could not have killed Gary Lyman's. We can let your attorney decide that. Now, you listen to me, Ferrari. I don't know who killed him or why they decided to do it in my house, but I will find out. Seventy-two hours. You can give me that much. I don't have to. As I recall, I helped you out of a little. Murder charge not too long ago. You hired me, and you have yet to pay. All right, Sydney. But only twenty-four hours. Well, it seems you two have decided on forty-eight. Fine, forty-eight hours. Wait a minute. I didn't agree. And I will hand you your killer on a platter. Forty-eight, but no more than that. And I hope that you are the detective that you claim to be. So do I. All right, Sydney, but only forty-eight hours. I should take you down to the station now and book you on suspicion. Oh, you're all heart, Ferraro. Now, who is going to clean up this mess on my new carpet? Not the department's problem. Gross! Oh, come on! Can't the department cut me some sort of deal? I mean, I am or. Was well, I was an officer. Check the phone book. Sick. There's several cleaners in the city. Oh, and I just helped her lay that new carpet. At least take the carpet with. <laughs> oh, I plan to. Never know what fibers might be hidden deep down. Ferrari, I swear, if I had my way. You... Uh, thank you, Lieutenant. I'm sure that we can find some new carpeting somewhere. Alex. Forty-eight hours, Chase. <laughs> I am so going to enjoy putting handcuffs on you, Tony. I didn't know you liked to play that way.、Uh, Sydney, why, why don't you come back to my place while the police finish up here? That's a great idea. Remember, Chase, only forty-eight hours. Well, forty-seven hours and twenty-eight minutes. Ferrari, when I get my hands on, let's go, Sydney. Come on, let's go now. You know, in all the years that I've known you, I don't think that I've ever seen your apartment. Oh, it's nothing much. Here, let me get the lights on. Hope there isn't a dead body on your floor. Yes, you and me both. At least this tile would clean up better. Alex, this is your apartment. Yes. Oh, yes, it is. I, I don't believe that I have entered into senility yet. Alex. This can't be your apartment.、Uh, why do you say that? It looks so, so organized and and clean. <laughs> well, now, what did you expect? Empty beer cans and pizza boxes all over the place. Are you making fun of my apartment? There's not a speck of dust in here. 
no dirty dishes in the sink? Nothing. None. There's nothing dirty in here. That's because I wash them after I eat. Oh. My. God. You have enough food in here for an army. I do like to eat. You, you even have leftovers. Look. In containers. Dated. Marked. Labeled. Containers. Oh, I hate to waste food. Uh, are you hungry? Your fridge is more organized and clean than my entire apartment. <sighs> I live simply, Sydney. After my wife passed away, I, I didn't need a large house to keep clean. This suits me just fine. But look at all this stuff. I mean, you must have five chess sets. Well, six to be exact. They're all dusted and pretty. I only have one. One set, which you gave me. And, and booze. I'm... I'm lucky to have a loaf of bread, peanut butter, maybe a cold pizza in my fridge. I know that we had dinner earlier, but would you like me to prepare you something? Oh, absolutely, yes. A double of anything. Oh, coming right up. Now then, did you ever hear from your friend about Harry Steinman? Oh, yes I did. And what an interesting bit of news he told me. Oh, I'm all ears. It seems that our detective friend is not... A detective. He had his license revoked after being arrested for assault. He spent years in prison. Oh, very interesting. Uh, so why was he looking for Gary Lyman's? That, my dear McGoogle, is the more interesting news. <laughs> While Steinman was in prison, guess who just happened to be his cellmate? You're joking! Our very own Gary Lyman's. After a few drinks, Sydney decided to return to her apartment. Uh, of course, I tagged along. By the time we arrived, the police had removed the body, and we were free to look around. Sydney, watching the clock is not helping. That's not what I'm looking at. Do you notice anything? Well, I have noticed that your stress level is elevated and that something is definitely nagging at you. Alex, just look at the clock. Oh, well, what about it? It's not hanging the way it was. It looks like someone moved it. Well, it doesn't look any different to... Well, well, now that you mentioned it... It's too high up for the police to have moved it, and... Let's just say I haven't dusted lately. Uh, maybe they were looking for bullet holes. Lyman's was shot point blank. The bullet traveled through his head and hit the wall on the opposite side. Oh, yes, I see your point. Besides, there are other little things that I'm noticing. Oh, such as? <sighs> A couple of books on the shelf have been moved. See? They're turned upside down now. <laughs> yeah, I know. Something that you would never do. You know me, Alex. I'm... Definitely not as organized as you, but I know my organized chaos. What are you thinking? I don't think Clemens came here to kill me. He could have done that any time. I think he was actually watching when I would be gone so that he could possibly search the apartment. Uh, search it? Uh, search it for what? I have a hunch. Let me see if I can find something. <coughs> I knew I still had it! Now what is that? The original lease on the place. Look, look, see? It still has the previous tenant's name on it, just before mine. How long ago was that? I would say about ten years now. After Lyman's went to prison? Definitely. And look at the name. Hmm. Mrs. Harriet Mayfield. Well, who is Harriet Mayfield? That is what I'm going to find out. But, ugh, it does mean that I have to go and see... Ferrari. <laughs> Hi, Sydney. Um, Sydney, where are you going? Ferrari. I have some business to discuss with him. Um, I don't think it's a good idea for you to see him right now. Look, hot dog. You don't need to be involved in this. It's between me and that... 
Mr. I'm never wrong, and I know everything. <laughs> Sydney, I like you. I really do. No matter what the lieutenant says. But he's on the war path right now. Isn't he always? So what happened between you and the lieutenant anyway? <sighs> We're not going to go into that. <laughs> I mean, are you just wanting to see him get punched in the throat? <laughs> I'm just warning you, he's really in a bad mood. I'll take my chances, hot dog. <laughs> so, I see that you finally came to your senses. You came here to give a full statement as to why you killed Lyman's. Only in your dreams. Clock is ticking, Chase. I just need to know one thing. Who is Harriet Mayfield? Okay, I'll play. Who is Harriet Mayfield? No, that's what I want to know. So why are you asking me? Was she possibly related to Lyman's? Why don't you find out, Miss Detective? Why don't you run her name for me? Look, Sydney, I've got 30 reports to do before I can go home. And I've got about 30 hours before you slap the cuffs on me. Speaking of... You sure did look cute in that Joe outfit when they arrested you for- All right, all right. Give me a few minutes. Go get some coffee or something. Well, what did Ferraro have to say? I was right. Harriet Mayfield was related to Gary Lyman's. Sort of. Um, she was his girlfriend. After I arrested him, she went to see him in jail just a few times and then up and disappeared. Disappeared? Well, she moved and left him. Ferrari was able to trace her to Las Vegas. She passed away about eight years ago, though. And she lived here before you did? Exactly. Well, that does not put her on the list of suspects, uh, being dead and all. No, but it might explain why Lyman's came here. And also explains... Why things have been moved around. Sydney, you don't think... I don't know, Alex, but I think that perhaps we should stay very still and calm and not make any sudden movements. Oh, why do you say that? Because of the gun I'm holding in my hand. Oh, not another gun. Shut up, old man. Now, Miss Chase, why don't you tell me where the diamonds are? Or I might have to shoot your friend. Oh, please. I've already been shot once. If I told you I didn't have the faintest idea where the diamonds are, w would you believe me? <laughs> of course not. Why don't I give you a little time to think about it? Let's say 60 seconds. Then I'll just wound your friend, at least, with the first bullet. So what makes you think that I know where the diamonds are? Your 60 seconds are almost up. What is it with time limits with people? Will you please put that gun down? What's the matter? Nervous? Dreadfully. And now just think for one minute. If, and I do mean if, Sydney knew where the diamonds were, don't you think that she would have done something about it a long time ago? McGoogle does make a point. Harry. Maybe she was just waiting for the right time. Oh. <laughs> you mean like the time they shut my lights off due to non-payment? Or maybe it was when they shut my phone off. Perhaps when I was three months past due on my rent, that might have been a great time. Uh, shut up. Both of you. Just let me think. Again, why do you think I know where the diamonds are? You really don't know, do you? <sighs> you know what? Why don't you enlighten us? Yeah, sure. Okay. I was in prison with Lyman's. I put my own self there. The insurance company arranged everything. I thought that well, perhaps I could get close to Lyman's and find out where the diamonds were hidden. I never dreamed that I would be in the same cell with him. So, you were undercover. Sure, until the company was sold and I was forgotten about. I was looking at a 10% recovery fee. But they just left me in there. Oh, so you decided to go into business for yourself? Yes, I did. Lyman's was a talker. I've never seen anyone who could talk so much. I just sat back and let him spout off about this job and that job. He had a lot to say about you, Chase. Oh, I'm sure he did. Well, when he got out, I followed him here. 
I wondered why he was so interested in you. But it wasn't me he was really interested in, huh? Huh. Figured that one out, did you? Sydney, I'm sorry. You're going to have to catch me up. It's simple. When Lyman stole the diamonds, he needed a place to stash them. So he picked his girlfriend's place. Ah, which is now your place. I'm beginning to understand. I watched Lyman's break in here that night. I let him look around before I came in. So why did you kill him? I didn't mean to. I, I mean, I didn't want to. He knew where the diamonds were, but he lunged at me and I... Well... Yeah, not the brightest of moves. Lyman's always did have some bad luck. How he became the most wanted thief in the city, I'll never know. Uh, enough of this. Tell me where the diamonds are. Alex! Uh, I I'm alright, uh, but are you? Uh, I'm fine, I'm fine. <coughs> Carrie? <laughs> I've been shot. Sorry about the window, Chase. How long have you been standing out there? Long enough. I saw this man through your window. Saw the gun. Thought you could use a little help. Thank you, I think. But why are you here now? Giving you your last ten minutes of freedom before I handcuffed you. I told you, Ferrari. I'm not into that. Very funny, Chase. If you don't mind, this man needs some medical attention. Ambulance is on the way. Sorry about the new blood stain on your carpet. Oh no, that's fine. Matches the other one. So what happened with the diamonds? Who knows? Maybe Lyman's girlfriend found them and that's why she took off. Are you sure you don't want to try and look for them? Well, I could use 10% of 3 million. Unless Lyman's hid them in the fireplace. Ooh, what fireplace? The one I had removed before I moved in. They took it out a piece at a time. Maybe one of the workers found them. Uh, what did they do with the pieces? Straight to the landfill. Uh, so the diamonds could be... That's right, Alex. Buried under ten years of garbage. So, would this Friday work out for you? Friday? Uh, for what, Sydney? A scavenger hunt at the dump, of course. <laughs> Well, well, well. Hello, hot dog. Hi, Sydney. I stopped by to let you know that all the charges against you were dropped. No kidding. There shouldn't have been any charges in the first place. Ferraro would never say it, but thanks for closing the case for us. I do try. Well, anyway, I thought you might want this. What is it? It's not much. Ferraro would never admit to having anything to do with it. Okay, Dorfman, what's going on? It's not wall-to-wall, -wall, more of an area rug. It's in the trunk if you don't mind helping me get it in. <laughs> oh my, was this Ferraro's idea or yours? Well, I did pick it out. Consider it a peace offering. Aw, hot dog. You really are a nice guy. Just please, please remember to stay that way. The diamonds never were recovered, and Sydney was only joking about the scavenger hunt. As for me, I still play a rather good game of chess with her on Wednesday evenings, but she has yet to take me up on my offer to cook dinner at my place. I do believe that she was just a little intimidated by my non-chaos organization. <laughs> Tonight's episode, Accused, featured the voices of Dave Arkhipov as Lieutenant Ferraro, Will Dorman as Detective Duffman, Ezra J.D. Emmons as Harry, Winslow Swan as Alex, and starring Crimson McKenzie as Sidney Chase. Produced and edited by Crimson McKenzie, and written and directed by Winslow Swan. Music by Kevin McLeod. This is your announcer, Mick Davis, inviting you to return for another mystery in the casebook of Sidney Chase. <laughs>